Hey folks, how's it going today? We're going to be looking at how you can quickly and easily make a fun little point cloud just like this one using a Connect Azure. And I'm going to show you a couple little tricks about the Connect Azure and how you might use it and how it's different than using maybe the Connect 2. So let's go ahead and delete everything in my project here. And I got my Connect just over here and it's a nice little unit and I've got the base and I'm just going to put that on my table over here. Great. So the first thing we're going to do whenever we're using the new connect is unlike the old connect where every single operator family had, you know, a connect chop, a connect top that worked independently of one another. The functionality of the connect Azure is that the connect Azure top is really your main point of contact here. And actually I've just put it on my mouse pad, which is why I can't click on anything. So I'll go ahead and make a connect Azure top. Now this is the actual device that's connecting to our hardware and pulling all of the data down. And that's a good way you can think about it almost like a funnel. All of the sensors data comes into the connect Azure top. And then from there, we can use other operators to pull information out of this top. So for example, right now, when I drop it in by default, I'm going to see my depth image here. And let's say I wanted an example of my depth image combined with my color point cloud of some sort. So I wouldn't go ahead and make another connect Azure top. Instead, what I would go is to the connect Azure select top. And like we just said, this allows us to pull out the different kinds of texture data from the sensor. So for example, I could go to this connect Azure select top drag and drop my connect Azure top onto the parameter here, connect Azure top. And then I could further select any of the other types of data textures that I want out of this. Now, the same thing works if you are going to use uh, any of the skeleton tracking data. You know, you wouldn't drop down a new connect Azure uh, chop all by itself in a project. You would still need that connect Azure top. But if I go ahead and make this connect Azure chop, you'll see one of the first things it wants is a reference to your connect Azure top. So in this case, I can then grab my connect Azure top again and drag and drop that onto the connect Azure top parameter. And lo and behold, all of my skeleton positions are coming in through that chop. So that's one of the immediate things to know about the connect Azure top is it has a little bit of a different setup fundamentally in your project where you are always going to have this connect Azure top uh, inside of your project. From here, there's a lot of fun stuff we can do and, and probably for the next few weeks, now that I have a, a nice little connect Azure top, we're gonna make a bunch of cool little projects with it. Um, but there's so many different options. Now, the first thing you wanna do is obviously select your sensor from here and your camera FPS. In this case, I'm gonna leave most of these at default. The one thing I'm gonna change is the depth mode. Unlike previous connects, we actually have a bunch of different options here. And instead of doing the narrow field of view unbind, I'm going to switch it over to the wide field of view two by two bin. And you'll see if we look at my connect Azure top here, as I change it, it gives me a much wider field of view than what I previously had. So this is great, especially when you're working on projects where you don't have a lot of space between, you know, the user or the environment and the connect Azure top going into one of these wide field of view modes is really great. Now, aside from that, the only other thing I want to do in this case is I know that my primary, you know, content that I'm building is going to be the point cloud. So I'm going to switch my main connect Azure top over to the point cloud. And I know that as a part of this, I'm going to want to color those point clouds with the actual colors of the color sensor here. So on my connect Azure select, I'm going to set this to color image here. And now we can see me over there as well. Now I'm going to show you a really fun trick, but first let's set up our point cloud. Now, if you haven't worked a lot with point clouds in touch designer recently, they are really great because now we don't have to go through the whole process of converting this texture into a set of chop data and then using it for instancing. We can just go straight from this point cloud texture data right into our instancing setup. So what I could do is let me go ahead and make my geometry comp here. That's going to hold my instanced geometry. I'm going to go inside of it and delete my torus. And I'll start by making a box sop. 
I'll turn on the render and display flags of this. And I'll preemptively go ahead and just make the size of this box a little bit smaller just because I know that almost all the time a one by one by one sized box is usually going to be too big for most of my instancing operations. So I'll set this to 0 0.1, 0 0.1 and 0 0.1. So now what I can do is go up to the instance page of parameters on my geometry comp. Let's turn on our instancing. And this is where I always say, you know, good people make nulls and you'll see why in a second, but I'll go ahead and make a null top here, connect my connect Azure top to it first and use that as the reference that I'm going to use for my translate op parameter here. And you're going to see why we made the null top here because we're going to drop some other operators in between. So first thing I'm going to do is map my TX, TY, and TZ. So my translate X is going to be my R channel. My translate Y is going to pull from the G channel. And my translate Z is going to pull from the B channel. That's really the value of these kind of textures. And if you've never worked with these point cloud textures, you know, at first they might look really strange because there's a little bit of blue over here, a little bit of purple over here, some light blue and white over here. But really what they are at its core is all of the X, Y, and Z information put inside of the RGB channels of that data. So that's why it still looks colorful, but actually it is representing pure data. And we could even see that before we get to our instancing, which if you haven't worked with point clouds, this is a super great thing you can do. On the connect Azure top, I could activate the viewer, right click on the background and click on this option that says view as points. And this is immediately going to take that XYZ data out of the RGB channels and just give us, you know, essentially what is a SOP viewer with points at each one of those pixels. So we can already see that great. We have, look at how great this scan looks, by the way. I'm very excited to play with this Connect Azure. And this is what we're going to represent here in a moment with our instancing. So this is a nice little thing. And just remember that this is, even though we see a SOP viewer in there and we see lots of points, this is still a top and it's just holding texture data. And that is only a preview. So even if we looked farther down in the chain, we're still just seeing the original texture data. So don't get confused if you go around switching that. And if you ever did need to switch back, we can activate the viewer, right click on that background and hit view as image at the bottom. And it's going to switch us back to that original texture format. So now that I have my geometry instancing against my data here, we're already going to see that those boxes are still way too big. Now I'm always of the mind that, you know, don't make any object particularly way, way, way too small, especially if you're looking at making physics simulations later. Uh, you generally want to have things be in a healthy range. So what I would do in this case is I've already made my box SOP 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1. So instead of making those any smaller, what I could do is make the 3D data space of my point cloud bigger. And this is a fun excuse for us to use some of new operators inside of Touch Designer. So what we could do is in between our connect Azure top and our null top here, we're going to insert an operator, which is why we put the null originally, and we can take advantage of the math top. Now the math top is really fun because essentially what it does is operate like a math chop. So if you're used to doing things like changing the ranges of values, using the multiply pre add post add to do any kind of really quick manipulation of chop channels, you can do all that stuff with the math top right on top of textures. Now this is really great because in this case, what we want to do is just fully expand our 3D range here. So I could go to the range tab and the fun thing about the range tabs, it lets you do scaling of ranges on each of the color channels separately. So I could do my R separately or my G separately or the B or the alpha separately, or I could do all of my channels at once. But in this case, I like to do simple things and generally I prefer to be lazier than you know, someone who types too much. So I know I can just take my multiply and say, you know what, multiply the whole 3D range by 10. Now you're going to see that it's going to get a lot more kind of split up into quadrants in our data texture. Now you don't have to worry because if you middle click on this, we can see that these are 32 bit floats. And if you haven't worked with different bit depths before, you know, the best way to think about them is normally working with 8-bit pixels and they have a small range of color that they represent. 
and a 32-bit pixel just has a much larger range of values that it can hold. So you don't have to worry about any clipping or anything like that. And we can see that once I've multiplied that by 10, it's starting to actually push my 3D boxes farther and farther apart. So if I even look at this, let me uh, orient the camera here. I can look at myself here as I start to increase that multiply range and we'll just see those boxes move further and further apart. So now let me move it up to maybe 15 and let's keep going to 20. And as we go, you can see that the boxes are overlapping less and less. Let's go up to 30. And this is really a personal preference. You can have fun ranging these as much or as little as you want. So maybe up to a multiplied range of 50. That seems to be pretty good where it's still pretty dense. Easy to see what's going on. A good amount of kind of 3D texture and, and visibility, but not too much overlapping happening. So I think that's a pretty nice spot to leave it there. So now if we want to plug in our color data, you might think, oh man, this, this might be a little bit confusing. How are we going to get you know, data from a color texture onto this 3D point cloud? Well, the Connect Azure has some really nice features that allow you to align just about any of the textures to any of the other textures automatically. And this is really cool, but you have to be careful with this. So for example, right now, if I am considering my color point cloud to be kind of my master data set, what I could do is go to my color image here, just the regular old RGB camera, and it's going to have an align image to other camera. Now you're going to see that every version of the Connect Azure top and the Connect Azure selects is going to have that align to other camera because you can select who is going to be your master and which other textures are going to get lined up to those uh, master texture. So in this case, I could go in the other direction and this isn't going to mess up the example, but just for viewing is I could have my point cloud align to my color image and you can see all of a sudden my aspect ratio now matches the kind of if I was to composite these two together next to each other they would essentially be lined up because the connect SDK behind the scenes that said oh, okay well the color image is your master well let me line up the point clouds so that both those things line up for you now in our example we actually want the opposite we want our point cloud to be the master and the cool thing is we can go to our color image and say hey you know what I want you to be aligned to my point cloud and you can see all of a sudden it's given it that little bit of fisheye. And the cool thing is now we are at the same resolution. So every pixel from our point cloud is going to match a pixel inside of our color, our, our now warped color image here. So what that means is just like we would do with any other kind of instancing, I can make another null top, connect my color image to it. And on my geometry comp here, I can go to the instancing two page of parameters, find the color area here. And now I can just straight up grab this null two with my color image, drag it to the color op, map R to R, G to G, and B to B. And now I have a fully working 3D point cloud with colors mapped onto it with only a click of a few buttons. No need for me to do any warping, any math, any kind of changing of, of data sizes or scales. That's one of the really great things about the Connect SDK is it allows you to line up all these things together. Now, over the next couple of weeks, as we look at some other cool stuff that you can do with the Connect Azure, we're also gonna be looking at how you can sync the images to the body tracking to that way to make sure that you know there's no frame delays between any of those uh, skeleton data coming in and your camera data in case you are trying to line those up as well. And there's a lot of fun stuff you can do with this, but hopefully this gets you started with your Connect Azure in a few simple steps, making a really fun and effective effect here. Enjoy. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you're serious about taking your touch designer and interactive skills to the next level, I highly recommend you check out the interactive and immersive HQ Pro. It's the only educational resource and community of its kind for touch designer and interactive professionals. You can learn more by checking out the link in the description. And if you like this video, don't forget to hit that like button. And if you're new here, don't forget to hit subscribe and the little bell icon for more awesome free content.